That's not building on the rock. What's it mean to build on the rock? Jesus tells us in verse 24, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, hearing and doing, hearing and heeding, hearing the word of God and obeying it. In other words, uh, if we're going to build on the rock, first of all, we have to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we can't hear him. We have to know him personally. You must trust Christ as your Savior and yield your life to him. Then, having trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, we must listen to him. You see, first we're born into God's family and become his children. Then we become his disciples. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And so we listen to him as he teaches us the word of God. And then whatever we learn, we do. We don't just listen and take notes and mark our Bible and we get a big head. We go away from church saying, my, wasn't that wonderful? I learned three new truths today. Well, what are you going to do with those truths? Because the word of God is not something just to hear. It's something to obey. And there's so many people who are hearers of the word. They are auditors, but not doers. And you know what James has to say about that in James chapter 1? He says it's not the hearing of the word that brings the blessing. It's the doing of the word. There's where the blessing comes from. Now, here we have two men building two houses. They both have the same desire to build. Uh, these men are not uh, going around tearing down. They're building. They want to build a good house. They might have used the same design. I don't know. The two houses may have been next to each other, for all I know. But there was a big difference. One did not go very deep. I understand that in Nazareth, where Jesus grew up, uh, when you go down about 30 feet, you hit rock. And of course, anybody who wants to build wants to build on a solid foundation. When Luke recorded this parable uh, in Luke chapter 6, in verse 46, this is the way he recorded it. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. D.L. Moody used to say converts ought to be weighed as well as counted. He dug deep. You know, there's some ministries today that are a mile long and a quarter of an inch thick. There's not much depth. A lot of noise and a lot of activity, perhaps a lot of statistics, but not much depth. Nothing wrong with statistics. Mr. Spurgeon used to say that those who criticize statistics usually have none to report, and that's sometimes true. But our Lord is saying, if you want to do what I want you to do, you're going to dig deep. You're going to dig deep into the Word of God. You're going to dig deep into a prayer life that's satisfying. And most of all, you're going to dig deep in obedience to my Word. So we come to Him and we hear his word, and we dig deep, and we lay a foundation. How? By obeying what he says. I would rather know what he wants me to do and do it than to know a lot more Bible and not do it. I'm going to have to give an accounting for everything I know about the word of God, and uh, especially those things I've not obeyed. Wasn't it Mark Twain who said, it's not what I don't know about the Bible that bothers me, it's what I do know. You see, there is false profession here. The one man built his house on the sand. Now, that means to hear the Word of God, but not to do it. We hear what the Word of God says about prayer. We don't do it. We hear what the Word of God says about giving. We don't do it. We hear what the Word of God says about fellowship, about forgiveness, about loving one another, but we don't do it. Oh, it's in our head. It hasn't gotten to our heart, and it certainly hasn't gotten to our will. Now, how can we find out whether we're building on the rock? Well, there are two tests. Number one, are we doing the will of God? When we look back at a day, can we say, all right, that man bothered me and I could have told him off, but I did what the word of God tells me to do. I forgave him and I loved him and I prayed for him. I was recently in a situation in my travels where our plane was delayed for weather reasons and then for mechanical reasons. And one man just became furious. He got a hold of the gate agent and just furiously 
uh, told him off. And I admired that gate agent who showed calm and poise and self-control. In fact, I told the agent so. Uh, I met him uh, a few days later as I was coming out of another plane, and there he was. And I said to him, I want to congratulate you on the way you handled yourself. One way we can tell that we are really building on the rock is that we are doing what God wants us to do. Now, occasionally we slip and fall. Occasionally we do what we shouldn't do. But for the most part, the trend of our life is to ask, what does the Bible say about this? And then to obey it. Secondly, you can tell when you're building on the rock when the storms come. Now, this storm in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. This storm is not the future judgment. No, no. The, the saved and the lost are not going to go through the same judgment. This is a judgment right now. Here we are believing the Word of God, hearing the Word of God, obeying the Word of God. We are building on the rock by obeying the Word, and God allows our faith to be tested. You've often heard me say, a faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. God sends storms to our lives, and the shallow, professed Christian can't take it. When the storm comes, the house falls. When the storm comes, there's no foundation. Notice what it says, great was its fall. Everybody heard about it. Everybody got the news. Here's this man who professed to believe this and to do that. He professed to belong to the Lord. And when the storm came, it turned out that his whole structure, his whole lifestyle was false. A shallow life, all show, no foundation. But the true believer, his house stands and he's able to endure the storms of life and just keep on going. Well, you and I had better test our profession of faith. It's not what we say with our lips. Anybody can talk religion, sing the songs, even pray the prayers. It's not how popular we are. You could be on that broad road going to hell and be very popular. It's not by ease or popularity that we test our profession, but by the truth of the Word of God. And this is serious, because when the storm comes, everybody's going to find out whether or not we really practiced what we preach. The people were astonished at our Lord's doctrine. He taught them as one that had authority, and he does have authority. And you and I had better be very, very careful, because one of these days we're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a tragedy it would be to hear him say, Depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. In other words, if we don't practice the Word of God, we're practicing lawlessness. We're building our house on the sand, and we may get away with it for a while, but ultimately there's going to be a storm, and finally there's going to be a judgment. You're listening to Back to the Bible. Just a reminder that spending time with God and His Word is the key to true spiritual growth. That's why Back to the Bible has developed Go Tandem. Go Tandem is a mobile scripture app that walks with you. That is, in tandem with you throughout your day, bringing God's Word directly to your smartphone or email. So download Go Tandem to your smartphone today. It's free. Just look for Go Tandem. That's Go. T-A-N-D-E-M. Let me encourage you with this reading from Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, 
but it will not come near you. Now let's return to our study. It's been a great week here at Back to the Bible as we've dipped into the archives for some of the most popular messages from years past. Tomorrow, we continue with Warren Wiersbe and his Pictures and Parables series when he shows us what a new life in Christ really looks like. Join us again Thursday right here on Back to the Bible. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.